Now we're actually coming to that bonus room. Remember when we were outside, we were talking about the room that's over the garage. It's too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. Well, one of the main reasons that we have that condition is that we have a floor that may not be actually um, have the insulation touching the subfloor or not insulated at all. Or we have these, called, these short walls in there. They're called knee walls. And one of the things that happen is a lot of times they'll have insulation behind that drywall there, but it won't have an air barrier on the you know, on the opposite side. And insulation works best, especially if it's fiberglass or cellulose. It needs to be conditioned, or it needs to be cocooned on all six sides, okay, or touched on six sides. So top, bottom, left, right, inside, outside. That's how insulation will be most effective. Okay, now we're actually in the attic. There's actually a door that actually enters into the attic, and Secretary Miller's actually using this as some storage space. But one of the concerns is I talked about that, that short wall that was actually in that uh, bonus room over the garage. But you will see that there is some pink insulation that's actually exposed here. And this we would consider unconditioned space that we're standing in right now or the storage facility or the storage area right here. But on the opposite side of that is a conditioned, um, conditioned uh, area. We need to make sure that that insulation is actually cocooned. And that's what I was talking about a little earlier. We would need an air barrier, put an air barrier along this wall right here to make sure that it's cocooned. Now we're actually up in the attic, um, and one of the things that you'll see is you'll see insulation that's, um, you know, blown. Okay, this is blown insulation here. You actually see the ducts that are exposed, okay? And one of the things that we try to do is find out, well, what is the actual insulation level of the, um, or the R value of the insulation that's up in the attic? And one of the things that we're finding is that there's certain spots that it's higher and certain spots that it's lower. And with that said, as we put a couple, a couple uh, tubes of insulation over here, and we see that in this particular instance, it's, it's well below the R19 level. And in some instances here, we have about an R25 level here. So on average, I'm going to say, as I'm just kind of looking around the attic, uh, because a lot of it's compressed, I'm going to say we have approximately a 20 to... You know, about approximately an R20. I'm gonna, I'm gonna and and what's that. what's recommended? Well, here's the thing: is recommendations from the Department of Energy go like this: from Zone Four, which we're actually in, it goes from an R38 all the way up to an R of 60. So we want to minimum be at the R38. And one of the things for Kentucky Home Performance is if we have levels in the attic that are below an R19, one of the requirements, the minimum requirements, is making sure that we bring it up to the R38 level. And as a matter of fact, all new buildings of today that are built in the state of Kentucky have to have an R38 in the attic. One of the things that we have here, and as we had access to the attic, we went up what they call an attic stairway. And what we find is we're um, looking at that attic hole or that attic access, is that if we brought that stair up and lifted it up, there wouldn't be any insulation on top of that, right? But inside, when we were in the attic, we actually saw, you know, some spots that were high with, it, you know, had... Uh, you know, some higher levels of insulation, some at lower levels. Well, this doesn't have anything. And this is a really, really, really big energy loss here because you now have a two by four hole, if you will, where air and, you know, conditioned air can actually either port through because there's not proper air sling around there or energy loss because it'll just wick its way up through that particular area. All right. Now we actually came into the area of the basement where we actually have the uh, furnace. We have a gas furnace here. We actually have a gas water heater. And one of the first things that I'm going to do is check my CO monitor, making sure that there is uh, no high level of carbon monoxide and just keeping, again, for health and safety of anybody in the home we want and ourselves that we're going to do the, the uh, evaluation. But it's still saying zero, so what we're good. What that's telling us is how fast is the air that we're trying to heat or cool rushing outdoors? Right? It's Correct. telling us how leaky is the house. It's telling us how leaky is the house and how much are we spending to heat and cool air that's not even staying in the house. All right. right. That's a good way of looking at it. All right. It's okay. kind of like the miles per gallon of our house. Mm -hmm. How efficient is it? That's a great way. Actually beautiful. We're actually going to do a new door on this one particular side of the house. But uh, Mr. Tim is going to go ahead. He's setting the curtain up. Uh, and what the blower door is going to do for us is going to test how leaky the house is with respect to the outdoors. And that's a real critical measurement that we want to find out because if we can get this house tighter, we'll use less energy to condition the air on the inside, be it heating or cooling, depending on the okay. season. One of the first steps that we're going to do when we start the blower door is just going to baseline it, uh, making sure we take into consideration any extraneous air movement that may be uh, around the fan and in the home. So uh, 
what we are doing here, setting it in. And okay, we are good. Let's we're gonna use this one. Oh. So I was taking off different rings there. And for this home, we're actually going to start off in the open position because we think that we have a, a pretty good amount of air leakage within the house. So we'll start off here, and we're going to just set the pressure to 50 pascals. And that band's going to take off, and it's going to give us a, a measurement of CFM at 50 pascals. we're seeing right here is this trying to get up you see PRA and flow is we're trying to get this and it's trying to get itself up to 50 pascals or negative 50 pascals we're at 42 leave that door open thank you it's at 42 right now and we're at a flow rate of 46.95 and what the DGM's uh, the DG700 is doing is it's actually extrapolating it for us so if it can't get to that negative 50 pascals, it'll actually extrapolate all that for us. So we're at 41.7, and we have a flow rate of CFMs of 4,825. Here we go. It's starting to pressurize now. We're at 44. Set it. We're going to set this at, could not get to 50 pascals of pressure in the house, but it extrapolated it again for us at 4,935 CFM at 50 pascals. And what in the world does that mean? It means that there is 4,935 cubic feet per minute that's actually being sucked through this house at 50 pascals. Is that a lot? And that is a lot. That We're means gonna try you have to, a lot of leakage. That means you have a lot of leakage, but even more so, what that, what that means is that you're spending a lot of extra energy that you don't need to spend. So one of the things at Kentucky Home Performance is we're going to try to air seal the house and make it so that you're not having as much um, exfiltration or air getting out of the house. What's a good number to be at? Well, it depends on the house size. So you just can't say for well, each particular... What would you like for this house? Uh, for this house, if we can get it to somewhere around the 2,500 to 2,700, that so would really be pretty good. Really cut it in half. Yep, basically. we could try to cut it in half. Correct. Yep. Okay, you ready? All right. What we have here is a thermal imaging gun. And again, back to those uh, recess lights. And what we're seeing here is a thermal image of a blue spot in the middle there, okay, with a temperature of 66, 67 degrees. And that's where air is kind of porting through from the upstairs attic and coming into this conditioned space here. And you can actually see from the thermal imaging gun what that can actually, um, showing us just some of the uh, energy efficiency upgrades that can be done in a home. Yeah. Because this is huge. Okay. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Again, with the thermal imaging gun, we went to the attic access, and this is a drop down stair, right? And you can see we were talking about weather stripping there. Look, perfect, 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 perfect. We have the blower door on. And what's happening is that you can see that cool air coming in from the attic, coming into condition space. And this just shows via thermal imaging of what uh, some of the leakage is going on.